can see I'm on the road and it is pouring rain outside. I am in a dimly lit <laughs> hotel room and there's a loud fan going. So I'm going to do the best that I can with my, uh, with my circumstances here. Uh, I was away last week, so I, what, I wasn't live and I didn't want to miss again this week. So I am back. Um, if you are new, I do a live stream every Wednesday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Toronto time. That's Eastern time. And uh, so I'm going to do the best that I can. And uh, we're going to look at maybe some small sketching or sketching on the road since that's where I am. All right, let me just uh, turn this around and see if I can get this uh, set up. It's not my usual setup, so things are a little different. Hang on a second. Um, can it, will it let me flip it around? It may not let me. <laughs> um, oh, there we go, okay, got it, there. So uh, let me just uh, set this up. Sorry for the motion sickness here. Here, we'll try and set this up. There, yeah, that should work. Okay. Um, yeah, last week I had a lot of uh, connectivity issues. I wasn't able to uh, go live, so I didn't want to miss again. Uh, so this is my little, little kit that I have for... Um, painting on location. I guess I can zoom out a little bit here just so you can see a bit more of this, but um, I've got a couple of value uh, markers. These uh, these markers are what I used for do the, doing a sketch like this, for example. Very fast, very handy to have. Um, and, you know, three little markers, and these markers come with a broad tip on one end and a fine tip on the other. So they're really good for, um, get, you know, versatility. And I usually get like something dark, something mid value and something light. Besides that, I have, of course, a pencil. I have one of these, uh, one of these pens. These are kind of fun to use. These, you know, you remember these from when you were a kid, right? And they have all the different uh, uh, inks in them. You know, I have a red and a green and a blue and a black on this. And it allows you to uh, some, to do some sketching. Uh, I have a, uh, this one's a uh, pigment marker. And this one's, uh, like you can get these in all different sizes. This one is a 0.3. You know, it gives you a, a nice little line for, for doing your sketching with. And my most important little bag here contains my brushes. I have four travel brushes. These I bought um, online. These are squirrel hair brushes. And uh, basically the end comes off and you have your, your brush. Um, so you have this. You need a couple of paper towels. And of course you need your little uh, paint kit. Now, this one is a little homemade one. This I made with a dollar store eyeshadow. And I simply removed all the eyeshadow. I roughened up the, um, the, the lid for it so that it wouldn't beat up every time I tried to make a mix. And I have in here, this actually has uh, a bunch of little things in it, but um, I have two uh, two yellows, two reds, two blues, two neutrals, and uh, I've even forgotten what I have in here. But I think this is a this is uh, two greens, I believe. You know, if I'm plein air painting, there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to be doing a lot of um, uh, foliage and landscape and that sort of thing. So I did actually put two greens in this kit. This is a believe a purple and this one is a Payne's gray. So I actually have 12 colors in here and uh, it's, it's very compact and it, it fits in this cute little bag, which my sister-in-law made for me. But um, yeah, so that's my little kit. Uh, you know, I don't usually 
worry too much about a water container. There, you can usually get a water container of some kind somewhere, but you know you could always take something a little a little compact container with water as well. So there's all of it right there. Very compact. I can take it anywhere I want to go. And uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, some of the sketching I've done in my sketchbook and. Uh, and maybe I'll show you what I would do with uh, maybe some of these tools. So uh, let me just make sure I have to I have to manipulate myself around here to read all the comments. But um, if you have comments, put them in capitals. It'll be a lot easier for me to see, especially on my little phone here, which is all I have today. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Trying not to knock my stand over. I hope you can hear me okay. I am, uh, uh, I, I had a mic and I think I packed it in my luggage which I left in the car. <laughs> but um, uh, here I used the, the uh, markers for this and uh, you know you can see the three values. I've, I've got a, uh, the white of my paper is pretty light but I also have a mid value pretty much used only two values here, like uh, two markers here. So one for the sky and uh, dark for the, you know, the background and some of the shadows and details on the uh, vehicles there. So that's kind of cool. And, uh, you know, here's another value study. Um, if you haven't done value studies, I highly recommend them. Uh, they are a wonderful way to sort of iron out the painting process so that you can uh, you can work out what will look good as a watercolor and <laughs> the fan just came on it's really loud uh hope hope it's not disturbing but uh, i'll press on here so you can see that you know where these were done and that sort of thing and when i did them and this is this is just such a little compact uh sketchbook that i have it's uh what is this called the Hampton Mini Sketchbook, uh, and this was given to me, uh, so I can't tell you where to get it. But <laughs> but there's a lot of really good sketchbooks out there. It's got a fairly a, a fairly sturdy paper in it, and that is one thing that I look for in a sketchbook is to have a, a, a sturdy paper with a fair bit of tooth. Um, the bit of tooth in it will allow me to paint a little bit with some uh, water media as well. So. You know, if it's too flimsy, if the pages are too thin, like uh, like a 90 pound page or something like that is a little bit too flimsy for painting with water media. But um, anyway, here's another one. In this case, I did need to use uh, the, um, the, the other values. And you can actually get multiple values with these markers because you can um, overlap them and it gets extra dark. So I'll show you some examples of that. This is just simply pencil, which surprisingly took me a lot longer to do because, you know, to cover all the, all the area, you're using, you know, like a mechanical pencil or something like that. And I like to use a mechanical pencil in my, um, in my travel kit. Uh, you notice I didn't even have an eraser <laughs> because I will do my sketching very lightly and then I will lock in my, um, you know, once I'm, once I've done something really lightly in my sketchbook then I'll lock it in with some darker uh, darker value Oop, I obviously missed a page let me see if I can get this to the next all right so here we go with uh, um, a little value study of a, a pot now in this one this is this is so important to do and you'll really notice how similar sketching and watercolor really are because in this case, I needed to keep the foliage really light, but the background quite dark. So I had to do a lot of what you might call negative painting, only in this case it was negative drawing, and uh, paint in between, leaving long, you know, long stems and, and foliage on this plant in order to make that show. And if, you know, a little sketch like this is probably, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 minutes, uh, you know, to, to put that down. It's not a lot of colors, obviously, just, or not a lot of values. It's, it's only got the three values. But um, 
it shouldn't take you very long to do. So you can work out how you're going to approach your painting in, it, it's, a, it's a 10 minute investment in your painting. So I think it's a, it's a really good thing to do. All right, so here's uh, some koi that we're swimming in the pond. Um, some, a little, some pots with, you know, some water coming out of them. And some more pencil sketching. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, just a little pencil sketch that I did uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, these are all over the place. I, I guess I've skipped over pages and gone back because, you know, I'm going back in time here. But uh, this too is another uh, instance of how I needed to use negative painting here or negative drawing. And this one I did with ink, right? So you'll notice I use a lot of mediums when I'm doing my sketching because um, the, the various mediums allow me to explore things in different ways. If I wanted to take something like this and add color to it now, that would be quite easy. Um, if you are using a marker, do look for, uh, let's see, where does it say here? It's got to say on here somewhere. Uh, uh, waterproof on paper, that's extremely important. Uh, light fast, right? So you don't want it to fade away. Um, like a lot of markers, like like just magic markers that you uh, use, they will fade a lot in the light. Uh, the store horizontally, uh, indelible, so there you go. Uh, so, so that you would be able to paint with wet media over this and uh, not worry about, um, you know, all the ink smearing and that sort of thing. So I was traveling and I had some time to kill. So it was during COVID and, you know, everybody was masked at that time. Not everybody wears their masks the way they should <laughs> with their noses out and that sort of thing. But um, this person was reading, and I was just sketching in the airport. I actually did another one, and uh, I ended up giving it to the person. But, uh, yeah, so just looking through here, making sure I'm not missing any comments. Not so far. Okay, I, th I think I'm caught up. All right. Uh, so here is uh, yet another sketch. Uh, this one's done with ink, and um, you'll notice when you're working with only ink, ink like a, a marker like this, you only have, um, you know, a fine tip to work with. So to cover in an area, you've got to do a lot of uh, um, either line work or, or cross hatch or something like that in order to fill in your values. But, uh, you know, I was studying these, this fallen tree and things like that, but some of the shadows. And again, we've got... Um, uh, some some value studies where I'm just kind of looking at, you know, the areas. So this is an area. The sky area is an area. The lake is an area. This shape here is an area, and this. And so you're looking for those uh, balance of of large shapes and values when you are doing this value study, and it tells you whether or not your painting will kind of look like it's off kilter or if it's uh, well balanced or something like that you know you've got to look at not just not just the positive shapes so the positive shapes being the 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 building the tree uh the road and the car but the sky the sky is a light area and people often forget that that too is a shape and it all has to work together if I had filled in this one for example and not left any of the whites down at the bottom it would have been very kind of heavy and dark, but I've balanced this big white area here with some of the uh, lighter areas in the road. And it's really rough. You can see, like I didn't even um, finish doing the windows. They're very sketchy, <laughs> if, if you will. But, um, I, and there's not too many here. It's just, I'm just gonna flip through the rest of these. All right, just to give you an idea. All right, so they're very, very coarse. It's it's not supposed to be a mini masterpiece, which is what I have re initially tried to do with my 
<laughs> thumbnail sketches. I tried to make them perfect. I started getting in there with lots and lots of detail and things like that. Uh, that's kind of not the point of them. So it, it, it'll help you work things out a lot more easily um, and give you kind of a dry run, a practice run at your, at your painting. So we'll just go through a few of these. I didn't look at this as one cut, one marker. I didn't even, uh, I didn't even use the darker marker. I just wanted to just get the shapes in. I think I started this one and then I got interrupted, but I have enough information here that if I actually wanted to uh, sort of make a loose uh, painting from this, I would be able to. I, I might have to uh, create a little bit, but creating's fine. You can easily do that. And again, it's it's something that you can do really quickly. And uh, just with a couple of markers. And the markers, I think markers are probably my favorite for working in my sketchbook, just because they are so fast. And, and I will start often with a pencil, and I'll, I'll do something with that. And... Uh, I didn't bring any physical references with me today or on this trip. So, you know, I figured I'd be painting from life. And if it weren't paint, if it weren't pouring outside, I probably would have been doing this from outside, but that's not the case. So, um, so I think I'm going to work from my iPad here. This was, um, this was a picture I took the other day and it, um, uh, it was just such a beautiful lighting, and, and there was this family with uh, a man with his two boys were on the pier, and the the old elder boy was uh, fishing, and the lighting was just so pretty. So I, I'd like to maybe sketch this in my sketchbook, because I, I think this was such a nice memory. So um, I don't know if I can get all of this on the screen at the same time, but I will, I will try. Hang on a second. I'll just adjust my... Maybe I can get it all on the screen at the same time. <laughs> okay, I've got a lot of glare here, but uh, we'll do do my best. So I'm looking. Okay, so this this pier here is lower, a little low, little below halfway. So we'll, we'll go maybe here. All these verticals are completely uh, straight up and down. There's no angles involved. Little, little dot for a head. And I'm doing all of this very, very lightly because um, I don't wanna lock it in until I'm sure I have everything in the right place. So, let me just, the dot is taller. All right, now we have that, um, land at the back here so that is maybe a little between a quarter and a third of the way down from the top and i know this sounds obvious but i'm going to say it anyway uh, make sure that if your image is uh, horizontal that your sketch is also horizontal i see a lot of people you know their sketchbook looks like this look, looks like a vertical so they do everything in their book this way and I guess it's so that you don't, you know, they don't like to turn their book, but um, I, I would work across two pages or something like that. I personally like the spiral bound uh, pages because you can flip them right over completely. And, uh, you know, it's a little easier when you're trying to hold it in your hand. If you have a sketchbook that's like a pad and you have to open it and it's got like this other flap hanging out, it's, it's a little bit more awkward. Okay, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to use my uh, markers 
for this. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to do this as a value study, I think, and then I will, um, maybe even, uh, depending on time, I'll see if I can do this um, very quickly with some watercolor in my sketchbook too. And I haven't used any watercolor in this particular sketchbook, so we'll see how this one um, behaves. Uh, but the sky is um, a kind of a mid-value. I would say a mid-value here. I always pull off the wrong end. They are marked with, like there's a little band that shows the uh, tip, a little image here, but I always seem to pull off the wrong one anyway. So I'm using the broad tip here uh, to get the sky in. And I will just go back and forth. There is one other tool um, which I can grab out of my bag, and that is a, um, a, a white gel marker. So if you have anything light that you need to add in, like I'm looking at these little light bulbs that are hanging on there, those would uh, certainly be useful to have the thing. Now, I'm going to I'm going to go to my lighter one here. So broad tip. And I'm going to go light. I'm just going to let them all overlap like this, smearing my pencil a little bit, but I won't worry about that in a sketchbook. Uh, all right. Now, in order to transition with a marker to transition from something really light to something a little darker, I just go over it again. I just run it over with a couple of times with the same marker. Then I can switch back to my mid value. So I have a, a mid value, I have a light value, and I have a dark. had these a while. I can see that this one's getting used up, but okay. so this one's a little, a little darker in this mid mid area here. And I know it probably looks like far too dark at the moment, but I have to put the darks in yet. So for that, for that horizon back here, I'm going to use the point probably has a little more ink in it. I'm going to put, this isn't the dark value, this is the value I just used here, it's just the other end of the marker. And if I layer it up, I can get a darker value. So even though I have three markers, I can actually get several values, just like you can in your watercolors if you're um, using you know, several layers or glazes to uh, create your picture. I'm just working this way with a couple of little wiggles at the top to imply that there's um, trees and things on the other shore. Okay, so now we have a little hard to see my pencil lines, but um, I could see it through here. Okay. Okay, there's my, there's my dock. We have this um, stand with, with these uh, lights along it. So I'm gonna put that along there. And now I'm going to switch to my uh, dark marker here. And Little, his uh, 
bait or whatever he's got on the end of his pole there. We have another one here. Another one back here. Okay, so we've got the little, the little brother here. And I'm not really thinking in terms of a, you know, a little boy. I'm looking at the shapes. What, what shapes am I seeing? I see kind of a box right there. The little legs sticking down. The dad is here. Um, when you are doing figures, think about the weight they are distributing. Like you know, the, their stance. His weight is on uh, this leg here, this hind leg. So that's the one that's going to be sort of more more under him, if you know what I mean. So, um, that's my value study uh, mostly done, but I'd like to get a couple of, I'd like to imply some of the ripples in the water and that sort of thing. So I'm going back to my mid value marker here, or my middle value marker, and I'm gonna start layering up a little bit more under this pier, but not as a solid. I wanna kind of make it look like there's the waves in the motion in that water here, so going to put some of that in. Uh, the, the markers are great because they are almost like the next best thing to watercolor. They have kind of a tip almost like a uh, almost like a brush. I think I might move to my dark marker here. This that one's working but it's going to be a bit of work so I'm going to come in here with my darker marker. These ones are uh, Copic sketch markers, and uh, and they you, you'll look in most marker brands. I know that there's several brands that are good. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say one well, one's much better than another because I haven't experimented with that many. But uh, you'll find that uh, most of them are pretty comparable, and uh, that most of them have these um, value markers, like just shades of gray and they come like in a cool gray or a warm gray so you can choose now of course the figures standing on on the pier are also creating a reflection in the water so I think that's kind of an interesting part of this is that they are also part of this uh, reflection And they just have to be a lot of horizontal lines, basically. I don't have to um, paint them with too much uh, detail or anything like that. The the reflections are often a lot longer. Than the I, like than the object that's creating the reflection, it it ends up being quite a bit longer. Now we'll put the reflection of this little guy on the dock. Can totally see this little guy following in his big brother's footsteps in about two years <laughs> on the dock with his dad. 
What a nice memory it's got to be for them. Lots of squiggles and dashes to make the, the figures. You just have to make sure that they're um, well lined up. You don't want to have them going off to the side. These are not like shadows. Okay, reflections and shadows are two completely different things. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to grab that white um, pen or that white... Uh, um, gel marker. That's what I was trying to think of. Okay, a gel marker like this is great for adding a little small white details. This one's a, a uniball. And I can add the little lights on my, on the uh, wire there. To get these a little brighter. There we go. So that's my little sketch. It gives a, a nice little mood to it. And, uh, you know, that's just working from there. And if I were to do this in, um, in watercolor, if I were to do the same sketch, let's flip that over. And, by, and when you use these markers, uh, you can see what it does to the back of the page. So I obviously just fold that over and use a new fresh page. Uh, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is get some color on the page. The rest of it's pretty much going to be the same. Uh, but just to pull out my little sketchbook here, and I'll just use my largest round brush that I have. This, these ones are squirrel hair brushes, but you can get these travel brushes that are uh, also synthetic. And uh, they work really well. So. You know, just the handle pops off. Handle's got actually a little hole in it. So, you know, if you don't want to um, ruin your brush, you know, by splaying it as you're trying to put it in, you know, um, like if your brush is dry, it tends to be a little fuller. And then you try to put it in and you're going to bend some of your hairs. So you wet the brush, bring it to a nice point, thread it in there. And don't worry about it. It's got a little hole for ventilation so that you can, um, so the brush can dry out and not be bothered. So this is my, my purple. I would say that there's a bit of yellow in this. Um, it's not a bright yellow. I'm going to maybe use some raw sienna. Use some raw sienna along this uh, line here. Just hardly any color. Uh, there's a tiny bit of pink. And I'll go right into my purples down here. Now, I know that this paper is going to wrinkle. I know that. Um, that is just the way it goes. It's going to wrinkle when it's wet, but as it starts to dry, it will flatten out again. You can also use like a, a clip, like you have a, a bulldog clip or something like that. You can clip this to some of the pages behind, and that will keep it um, a little bit more secure and flat as you're painting. Um, I didn't, I forgot to bring those, so I don't have them. So I'll hold it as best as I can with my finger. And our sky, let's see, our sky is a little bit purple as well, but it's slightly more bluish. A little more blue than that. All right, so that's just getting the color on the paper. I would let that dry and I would 
just go on, carry on with, uh, I, you know, instead of using markers, I might use my, my paints gray or something like that uh, to, to paint in my figures. You know, there's a little bit of color, but you know, at this hour of the day, you're not going to see a lot of color and it will just be, uh, um, you know, it'll just be mostly silhouette. You'll only, with only a hint of color. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what I would do there. So maybe get a little more color down here because I know it's going to dry lighter. Probably bring that up a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty wet. I would have to just sort of sit here holding this in order to get that dry. Uh, but I mean, it seems it's not like my my usual 100% uh, cotton paper or anything like that for painting on. Uh, but I'm only working very very small here, so um, you know I'm also not going to be hanging this in the Louvre. So I will um, I'll be happy enough with what I get here in in my sketchbook. So anyway, that's that's basically. Uh, you know, how I'm working when I'm um, traveling and that sort of thing. I had really hoped to do something a little bit more substantial today, <laughs> but that just, that just wasn't in the cards. So I'm just going to take a look here and see if I've got any questions. I have to stand up to look at my phone here. You've been waiting for me on another video. Oh no. Oh, that was probably me trying to set this up. I, th I thought I deleted it though. Huh. Oh dear. Well, hopefully you'll find the replay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry if you missed it live. That's, uh, that's a little discouraging, but you know, I'm winging it here, playing it by, playing it by ear, trying to figure it out on my phone uh, with, uh, this weird internet that I have here. Um, yeah, y y you know, you just have to adapt to your, <laughs> to your circumstances. So let me just, um, uh, take my phone off here. Let's see. We'll f see if I can flip it around. There we go. Um, whoa, sorry. <laughs> I'm going every which way. It wants me to rotate, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know what that's doing on the feed. I have no idea, but uh, hopefully that, hopefully that uh, works. Anyway, we'll find out. I'll find out in the replay, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. I'm so just reading through here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Sorry for the uh, confusion there. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, thanks, everybody. I'm going to sign off now um, and uh, hit the road again. <laughs> off, off to my next adventure. So we're, I'm, I'm just sort of on my way home, and uh, for sure I'll be here next week. <laughs> All right, then. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend and a great week. Bye.